This week on TGC News, Brownells updates their uppers, Surefire drops the second gen, Silencer Co. makes a gun, and much more. Keltec continues to evolve and innovate with designs like the P17, an ultra affordable 17 round 22 pistol, or the CP33, a 33 round 22 caliber pistol. How about the KS7 bullpup shotgun? And of course, the RDB lineup continues to grow with the RDB Defender. Keltec keeps pushing the boundaries of what is possible. To learn more, go to keltecweapons.com. Welcome back to TGC News, the only gun news show that covers things you actually care about. My name is John Patton. We've got a bunch of stuff to cover, so let's get rolling. First up this week, Brownells has announced a second generation to their BRN 180 uppers. For those out of the loop, at the end of last year, they announced their BRN 180 as a continuation sort of of their retro line of guns. It's modeled after the AR-180 from yesteryear. They are a sort of self-contained system with recoil springs located in the upper itself, which means you can rock them on a lower without needing a buffer tube and associated trinkets. They're also piston driven, which can run cleaner and cooler overall. It was met with warm welcome and now the Gen 2 is here less than a year later. I guess they saw a need for some updates and moved quickly on that. Let's run down the basics. They've taken the adjustable gas system from the Gen 1 BRN180S and applied it to all of the models across the board. Adjustable gas systems are great. This is good for folks that want to shoot suppressed and unsuppressed or just play around and sort of find the right setting for the ammo that you're using. They've also changed the way the handguards mount to make them more simplified and according to them more rigid overall, which is partially intended to help with maintaining accuracy with lasers and aiming devices and things of that nature. The uppers will come in 18 and a half, 16, 10 and a half inch, and the brand new 10 inch 300 blackout version. The blackout version actually comes with its own special shorter adjustable gas system. For me, these are one of those sort of cool factor gun products, and they should be for the MSRP on these coming in at $8.99. I'm curious to know what you guys think of these things. Are they cool enough to grab one? Like, are you really, really excited about this? Are you definitely getting one? Or are they more of like a dream gun, sort of upper echelon kind of thing for you? Do you think these offer advantages over a standard DI system that has a buffer tube and a regular gas system? Sound off in the comments and let's talk about it. We've got even more to cover, so here comes the minigun. First up in rapid fire is a new silencer from Surefire called the Rider 9 Ti2. A second gen can that features a thicker titanium tube wall, which claims to help with durability and point of impact shift, an improved booster with new coatings, easy to index baffles, and some other smaller improvements as well. Not only that, but it's a smaller diameter can, which is cool for possibly fitting it under the handguard on a PCC if that's your jam. MSRP on the TI-2 is $849. Magnum Research is pumped about the re-release of the Baby Eagle lineup of guns in both polymer and steel format. They're calling it the Baby Eagle 3. It says Desert Eagle on the side, but the model is actually a Baby Eagle. Shout out to them for confusing people. The new steel frame variant is supposed to have the slimmest grip yet, and they've made the gun much more smooth overall. They've sort of removed texture and angles and stuff. I'm not sure if that's gonna be a good thing or not. Most people are adding texture at this point in the game. The polymer frame gun gets very little mention because it's not really changing that much. Also, if you look closely, these guns are being made in Israel by our friends at Bull Armory, they like Bull Transmark is what they call it in the press release, which begs the question, why is it priced at 646 bucks when the Bull Armory Cherokee can be had for a lot less and is basically the same damn gun? I don't think the brand name premium is worth it for that particular case. Maybe I'm wrong, but I suppose time will tell. Also in the news, Silencer Co. has released their new billet AR lower. It's called the SCO. 15 or the SCO 15, <laughs> it's probably not called that. And the key points are the proprietary ambi bolt catch, 
flared magwell and large trigger guard and some cool styling sort of poured over the top. I think it's really interesting that they released this in the middle of all this craziness that's going on in the gun industry. It's certainly not a bad move because these things are already selling like crazy after only being available for a few short days. MSRP on them is $249. I almost wonder if this is an indication of them potentially doing their own line of guns in the future. Hmm, Silester Co., what's the deal? We shall see. Next up this week, I want to talk to you guys about something different. I need your help. I know I ask for you guys to support our sponsors and things like that, but this is, this is different. I need your help. This is something that has nothing to do with TGC and everything to do with helping people. There's a pro-gun nonprofit that needs the TGC family's help. They're called Hold My Guns, and the basic premise is that in times of need, you could, without going through the government or police or something like that, store your firearms with a local dealer. The idea is that folks that are struggling with their own mental health or perhaps someone in the household is struggling, you could use the Hold My Guns program to discreetly store your guns somewhere safe. Also, if you're heading out on deployment, this could be an option for you as well. It's really centered around having a self-governing option that doesn't involve going to the police or some other government organization that has the potential to red flag you. That's a serious thing. So. That being said, HMG is new and they need dealers. They are trying to develop a nationwide partnership of dealers. That's where you guys come in. They need dealers to step up and become storage partners. They are also looking for more gun industry support as well. So please, if you could, head over to holdmyguns.org or email info at holdmyguns.org. And if you can, get involved. In an effort to be really transparent with you guys, I am in no way being paid for this. And my fiance Genevieve, who you guys know and love, you've seen her on the show and in our videos all the time, she's actually a co-founder of Hold My Guns. We really believe in this mission and I hope that you guys will help out. To borrow from their mission statement, we believe that times of hardship should be met with an outpouring of compassion and camaraderie, not fear-mongering and confiscation of constitutional rights. Kinetic Development Group has been leading the charge on innovation for a long time, and they are a one-stop shop for everything related to the FN SCAR. Whether you need a scarging handle, an MREX rail, or maybe a sweet quick detach optic mount. KDG has all of that and more. And if you use the code TGC10 over at kineticdg.com, you'll get 10% off your entire order. It's time for Friendly Fire, the segment where I answer questions from our loyal Subscribestar supporters. Hit the link below to find out more about that. First up, Ghost says, do you think the California magazine limit law will go to the Supreme Court? And will the court hear the case? Will the Second Amendment win? It's tough to say, really. I think the state of California will absolutely try to shut that down. I think they are really going to try hard to not let this go to the Supreme Court. But I also think that in the chance that it does make it to the Supreme Court, they won't hear it because they're scared to take a stand for the Second Amendment and constitutional rights. I genuinely believe that. Daniel Hayden says, how do we reach the NRA members that aren't aware of what Wayne has been doing over the last two decades? I got to admit defeat on this one. I don't know. I really don't know. Maybe TV shows, but... That would require folks that were previously pumping up the NRA, like the people on TV, to take a stand, and I doubt that's gonna happen. That would make them look like they were wrong, and people don't like looking like they were wrong. It could just take time and education. People have to actually care as well. For a lot of folks, the NRA is a symbol, not really a real organization with people in it, and they don't really want to shoulder the stress of whether or not that organization that they give money to is doing the right thing. They, they just wanna, say that they send their money there and forget about it. They just expect it to not change. And the unfortunate reality is it has changed because of that attitude. Rusty in Oregon says, I just can't convince myself to carry with a round in the chamber on a striker fire pistol with no manual safety. Am I smart and safe or am I a spineless wimp? Let me say this, you're allowed to make your own choices. Don't let anybody tell you different. I personally carry with one in the chamber because I know a properly functioning gun will not just go off on its own. I know that my holster will keep the trigger covered and protected, so I don't have a fear that it will discharge in my pants. I think you should look into the various safety measures put in place around that issue on your gun. 
And if you're still not comfortable, carry with a gun that has a safety and one in the chamber. Having a chambered round is a big deal in my opinion. My friendly fire question to you guys, how has the current buying frenzy affected your shooting habits? Are you just blasting away with no cares or are you backing way off to conserve ammo? Drop your thoughts in the comments. And if you wanna ask a friendly fire question, head over to Subscribestar and support us directly on there. And that is it for this week's show, guys. I would love it if you hit the like button to show your support and feed the algorithm. If you think we've earned it, get subscribed as well. As always, thank you all for watching. We'll see you soon. More rigid overall, how you can be a part of TGC, whatever, I didn't, I f***ed that up. <laughs> it's time now for four Why? Why is my brain doing this? Yep, it's over, but don't worry, you can click on the video up top to watch last week's show, and the one below that is the one that YouTube thinks you'll enjoy. Check them out and let me know what you think.